For Jeannie, a return to Bramfontein was like coming full circle. She went to school here and, like Adam, loves the city. Born and raised in Josie, Adam studied law but was always a frustrated architect and designer. In his travels abroad, he noticed how cities like Paris and New York regenerate themselves and resolved that Joburg could do likewise. This really is incredible, but how bad was this building when you bought it? Well, the building wasn't that bad. The area had been abandoned, so most people weren't familiar with Bramfontein. But I saw in the building a phenomenal opportunity. It had incredible views. The Mandela Bridge had been built the year before. You know, it was the sort of thing that if enough people had seen it, they would be clamoring to get a piece of it. And I was luckily one of the very few people that did see it. And most of all, one of the very few that saw the opportunity in it all. It's all very well having the idea, the vision. But realistically, how does a 25-year-old guy afford to buy a massive building in the middle of the city? The reason that a young person could buy a building was because buildings are literally being given away. You're talking about buildings that were worth hundreds and hundreds of millions of rands that you could buy for a million rand. So I was lucky enough to raise adequate capital to buy a building, but it wasn't like excessive amounts of money because you didn't need to because no one wanted to be in the city. Once he bought the 10-storey block, the process of creating seven expansive apartments began with his own duplex. What was your original vision for this apartment? Because it's so modern and minimalist, but you've kept some original finishes from the building. You know, I'm a minimalist in respect of design, so I like clean, linear things, but I also love the storytelling part of it. So when you talk about this apartment block, or when it was a commercial building, its overriding redeeming quality was the fact that it had this unbelievable canvas of the city skyline. So you look through these big gaping windows, and you just see everything that is dynamic. You see all of the potential of our city. You see all of these things, and that is evidence like a comic book right in front of you. And it's part of the storytelling aspect is being sensitive to what this building was. So you can look at a slab that I've cut out and I've covered in my little fascination and obsession with Lego. That used to be the rooftop of this building. But four original arches that I duplicated here to create, you know, this additional triple volume space. So those are things that you take part of a story and you make it your own. Insisting on getting the right contractors for the job, it took Adam four years to convert the 600 square meter space into this epic penthouse. Anyone who walks through the doors can't believe this actually is Johannesburg. They look around and go, well, you know, it reminds me of Cape Town, or it reminds me of New York, or there are lots of, there are very few people that walk in here and go, well, it reminds me of Johannesburg. But that's what we should kind of aspire to. You know, those are the things that I'm fascinated about. So it's not just about great architecture and great design, it's about the dynamic element that you bring into a space. The components are the design itself, but most of all, the people that give it life, that infuse it with their energy and their enthusiasm. And that is the thing that I focused on for the last decade, is finding enough of those people. And as soon as you get enough of them in an environment, you can change the world. And I think South Africa and Johannesburg certainly has been changed and this is the epicenter of that. So it's a very, very inspired time. As a resident, Adam feels entitled to push the city to keep in step with its own plans for redevelopment. He means business, but retains his sense of humor. You really do have such an eclectic art collection and so many interesting things in your house. Well, thank you. I think, well, one is I probably am quite an eclectic, interesting human being. And I got that from my parents. You know, my parents raised me in an environment where we spent company with radical people who were free thinking. and in worlds of art and colorful, creative spaces. So, you know, this is something that I've got in St. Paul de Vance and every little piece over here has found its way home with me on a backpack or in my suitcase or under my arm. So, you've got to keep an eye open and anything in life is possible. The smiling tears in this artwork say it all. Where others see distress, Adam feels optimism and the city is his waking, sleeping muse. Oh, this is my bedroom here. I love that. There's a whole lot of traffic all over. Do you prefer we say windows up or the curtains down? Huh? Which one you like, no? It's an exhibitionist's <laughs> dream. Adam lives where he works, so has time to relax while everyone else is stuck in traffic. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> this is just one giant splash room. I think that's really the beauty of this apartment is 
the attention to detail. Everywhere you look, there's something interesting. Well, I know where I'm looking. <laughs> he didn't get this far by being shy. Adam's great strength is his way with people, and he builds as much by bringing communities together as he does by renovating structures. The perfect example of creating spaces for all, and always with a twist, is Joe's most unique rooftop. At what point did you decide you wanted a beach in Bramfontein? This, strangely enough, started off about 12 years ago when I was backpacking around the world and I was in Paris, and I'd seen the beach and the River Seine, and I just thought, what an amazing idea. And the minute I arrived back here, I said to my staff, we're building a beach. And they said, you're a lunatic. And I said, I know, but we're still going to build a beach and be starting tomorrow morning. <laughs> and uh, that's where our idea came from. So it's a quirky, sort of very unusual thing. People love it though. Bramfontein Beach. It. I'm obsessed with it. Adam's company has redeveloped skyscrapers, Victorian hotels, and the neighbor goods market, where every Saturday, the best speciality in country produce and design comes standard. Did you have some kind of a plan in your mind when you were putting together you know your town planning so to speak well I always had an idea about having more people in the area that's the thing that I knew would be the catalyst to transforming it and to get enough people to start seeing something you need to give them product enough that they'd want to come back with great regularity and then nothing does that better than a market yeah. so Justin and Cameron are the guys who started the Biscuit Mall in Cape Town, were tenants of mine for five years, and I always said the minute that I get an opportunity to have something fast enough and scalable, then I'd want to do something with them, and, and that's where the idea was born. Did people ever think that you were going nuts? <laughs> Coconuts. <laughs> Can we get two of them crazy coconut balls? <laughs> Those who retired to the northern suburbs at night thought Adam was bananas when he set about this inner city revolution. But there are others who do share his taste for adventure. <laughs> We've got a little trick. You can have, of course. You're paying for it. Tastes like orange juice. <laughs> I am paying for it. I pay for everything. In the returns he looks for go way beyond the financial. His redevelopment of the Alexander Theatre has become one of Joe's hippest live music venues. And this, the anti-establishment bar, is a celebration of going against the grain. Well, this is definitely the most beautiful local pub I've ever seen. Thank you. I mean, this bar's anti-establishment opened up a couple of days ago. It's not franchised. It's not big kind of commercial globalization. It's small, it's niche. The people behind the counter know your name, they know what you love. You can't get anything other than artisanal product here. And that's part of this entire ethos of this environment. All of these incredible things that make you feel like you're at home, or make you feel like you're having a heightened experience. And this is, I suppose, an extension of that. You've created a community here that is motivating, that's electric, it's energetic, it's inspiring. What was that motivational force in your life that inspired all of this? Well, I suppose, you know, my biggest motivation would be my parents in life. My father always said to me that every city deserves a benevolent dictator. And I think that's probably what I try and think about all the time in operating in Bramfontein. What would somebody who was in a mayorship position, who had the tools and the capacity to do all the things that they were able to do, and then they thought about the very best interests of everybody. How would they live their life? And most of all, how would they action things around them? And that's, I suppose, the prevailing thing that makes me do the things that I do here. Well, thank you so much for showing me a whole new Johannesburg. It's, well, it's amazing. I loved having you here. Come back. Thank you. You're doing a little bit more. Just I will. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs>